right, what's going on guys? We are hooked up number one of the day. You know, look at this weather for a second. This is how I feel like all of July has been. Just hot, super flat out. And we're gonna kind of talk a little bit about today what this kind of conditions does to fish. And it kind of makes them just float in this clear water. A lot of times they're not gonna lock down the structure when it gets like this. And these fish just turn into roaming floaters out in the basin or around structure and today we're pulling spinners for 100 percent suspended fish and uh the quality is going to be good mitchell i think Does it feel like a good one as it generally is when you're fishing this kind of open water pattern so we just got set up you know we're not seeing a whole ton of marks yet but we're going to kind of go into a little bit today on basically what you can look for as far as you know what kind of depth to target out here when you're doing kind of this 100 percent open water suspended bite and uh, you know, it pretty much works everywhere on these deep clear lakes that we fish a lot of. There's a nice clear area wall right here. Okay. So today we're gonna talk about how you guys come out here and have success on these tough dog days of summers. All right guys, there we go. Just a quality chunker Hayward area walleye. And these are the exact kind of fish you can expect when you get on this kind of pattern. I mean, that fish is only about 22, but just a chunky stud. We're gonna let that one go. And uh, hopefully get a few more of these today. We got another fish here. Uh, we just let Tom's back a little bit ago. We swung around, checked their lines, put them back out there a little deeper. We are over, what, 40 feet of water right now, Thomas? Yeah. I got myself a fishy. They about 20 down. 20, 20, 25. Hoping this is just a chunker. How does it feel? Eh, doesn't feel very big. Not a whopper. No sir, but I'm hoping it's tricking me right now. It's a big fat 30 incher that we have caught out here before. It's a trickster of a walleye. You got that net for me, Tom? I do have What a net. nice guy. Not a monster, but a nice one. There we go, beating the heat. Nice fish here, we're gonna hurry up and get this one back in the water because it looks like we got another biggin on on this outside board. Biggin! Biggin! On! Now we're gonna talk about how you know basically where fish are and you can still use your electronics even though you're fishing a lot of open water to see fish. Um, can side imaging work? Yes. Can down imaging and sonar work? That's what I mainly use most of the time when I'm fishing these pretty deep depths for fish that are generally towards the top of the water column. So, you know, as I'm cruising around kind of looking through these spots, what I want to see is two things. I want to see bait and then obviously I really want to see walleyes. Bait on a graph is going to look something a lot like this right here. And a lot of times you use down imaging to verify what that is. You know, and, you know, bait's pretty easy to identify. It's generally a big cloud. Um, the depth of it, not super important. You know, in a lot of lakes like this, these deep, clear, natural lakes up here in northern Scotts, northern Minnesota, they have a lot of ciscos or tulabies, stuff like that. A big fish, which is a big bait fish, which is going to be down a lot of times deeper than 30 feet, 40, 50, even 60 down in the summer. Um, so really, I'm not too concerned about that. If I get in an area where those, great, because generally areas that have life, um, are full of life of everything. So that's always a good thing too. But what I wanna see is these good bait clouds like 20 feet down or somewhere in that fishable zone that I'm fishing. Now, walleyes are also relatively easy to see. And because you're dealing with a very um, a high volume of water. I mean, you're looking for fish in 50 feet of water that are to the surface. So a lot of times you don't get super hard returns off fish that are really high in the water calm over 50 and 60, because as you get deeper and those fish are high up in the water, the size of that arc is gonna shrink just because it's a lot more depth to fit onto one screen. So um, this is right here is basically what a walleye would look like over open water. And this is exactly why I run down imaging and sonar, because sometimes there's stuff on sonar that you can't see on down imaging, and sometimes it's the other way around. So um, good little tip there, run both those, you know, to keep an eye on those fish. And if those fish are like, 25 down in clear water. I don't necessarily want my bait to be 20 feet, 25 feet down. I want my bait to be, you know, five feet above that maybe. You know, it's a very clear water. These fish are very accustomed to coming up and smacking baits. Um, so when I'm trolling around, you know, looking for fish, this is what I'm looking for. It tells me I'm in the fish and then I can adjust my spread to where I see in those fish. All right, give me that camera. Or give me, oh yeah, I'll take this. This is all about the Instagram. He just wants this, that one just, fish a day that just lights just, up the that, that big one. I have 101 followers now, thanks to all my uh, followers. Followers. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I got a dog. You got a dog? You got it, dude? You got it. Come on, man. Encrypt oh, the board, dude. Happen. All right, I got the board. Encrypt the board, dude. Holy cow. He's got some weight. Yeah. Some weight oh, boy. You got to back up a ways, though. It ain't no snag, Mitchell. No. Boards off. Feels like feels like some nice weight on this one. Like a substantial this this might be my Instagram post. I'm getting excited. That's a really good fish. Look at that, you can see him down there. Oh, that's the one, Mitchell. That's the one we need. Got him. Got him, buddy. Uh, awesome. Those are big northern Wisconsin walleyes right there. That right here, this is the reward of uh, combing this basin. Get big fish like this, this is what we're after all day. What do you think? That's awesome. I love so, catching big walleyes, especially out of Hayward. Going. What do we got, dude? <laughs> all right, dude. Boat's a mess right now. We got rods laying everywhere. Yes. This is what happens when you catch big walleyes. We just had that nice double that Mitch had. And I'm not gonna lie, Mitch, this one feels good too. Good. Tom, you're due for a big walleye. You just you just don't catch many big fish. I just don't I just don't catch many fish. I just catch little dinkers. Little dinkers. That one bit about 25 down over 52. Show you what we're doing. And we'll go into a little bit here as I'm reeling this fish in as far as kind of what areas you know we're targeting. Because you come to a lake like this and it's there's a ton of basin. I mean it's pretty much all basin. So basically what kind of areas, you know, how can you center up and uh, you know, basically put the odds in your favor that you're gonna be around walleyes. All right, so where do you start trolling when you're trying to pick apart a huge basin like this? Um, you know, generally it's not like we're fully just getting away from all the map and we're just gritting everything off in a random order to try to find these fish. Basically what we're doing is we're using deep structure and deep contour lines to kind of follow where we think these fish are likely to move. And kind of that line a lot of times is the hard to soft bottom line or any hard to soft bottom change you have out in the basin. So, you know, we're looking at a map here and uh, you know we have kind of a big wide open basin here, right? The green is basically 20 to 15, I wanna say. The red's obviously all shallow. So here we have a big open basin, a lot of 50, 40 feet of water. And what I don't wanna do is just get on an area that's just super, super flat in 40, 50, 60, 70 feet and just start raking over that. That generally does not work as good for me. Generally what I wanna do is follow a deep contour line. So right here what we have, and I'll kind of scroll into it here a little bit. We have a big deep basin and then we have this 40 foot flat. And right coming off the base of that 40 foot flat where it goes even deeper out to 45, 50 is gonna be a hard to soft bottom transition. And you can tell when you're going over some of those, like here's a picture here. Um, you can see where the bottom basically gets harder all of a sudden or is a real hard spot. And for some reason, these are the kind of spots that walleyes really like to suspend over. So kind of the natural path I would take through something like this, I wouldn't be up here squiggling around. I'd be coming right around the side of this like this and cupping the deepest piece of structure as I go out around that basin. So I might come down through here, come up along here and down through like that. As opposed to trying to crisscross and weave my way across a lot of this stuff. So even though, and it's crazy once you start uh, seeing a lot of this, but basically let's say you're trolling in 60 feet of water and there's a hump that comes up five feet on the bottom and is a hard bottom like something like this here. Bait fish and walleyes like you can see right here have a tendency to hang out over the top of that stuff, sometimes 20, 30, 40 feet over the top of it. I'm not really sure why that is, um, but for some reason they know that's down there and they do relate to that very deep structure even though they're not holding on that piece of structure. All right guys, we got them right here. Another quality walleye, you see that thing Mitchell? Look at that. Head. I just love that so much. I love trolling these things out in basin like this. Oh my oh. gosh. This is, you want me to get him? This is what happens when your rod's way too long. <laughs> Got him. Oh. Another just back. quality Hayward area wallet right there. This is an absolute blast. You know, it's just flat calm out here. The structure bite has been absolutely awful. Nine out of ten guys are probably just, you know, it, it sucks to fish structure right now. If I wasn't throwing open water, the bite would suck today. It, there we go, nice guys. Fish. Just another healthy, healthy Hayward area wallet. We're going to get this guy back. Absolutely awesome day. We're still on our first pass here. We haven't even reeled stuff up and uh, re-dumped, but we're gonna let that one go and hopefully catch some more of it.